Hello my friends and welcome back to the how to series where we cover every single job FF14 has to offer. In this video we're going to go over white mage which is part of the pure healing family and what they focus on is raw healing potency and regenerative healing. If you don't know the how to series what we do is we break down every single ability and how to fully utilize them while we're leveling and in endgame content. We then go over an opener and rotation. We'll then show you a high-end dungeon just to show you how you should typically be healing in a high-end dungeon and then I'll talk to you about how we're going to be statting a white mage and the priority behind the stats and then I'll finish off with some closing thoughts about how I feel about white mage. So without further delay let us just dive right in. So first we'll go over the healing abilities. First we have Cure 1 and Cure 2. Cure 1 is accessed at level 2 and it's our single target heal for less MP than Cure 2. Once we get to level 32 we get a trait called Free Cure and this has a 15% chance that every time we use a Cure 1 the next Cure 2 will cost no MP. Which leads me on to Cure 2. It's just our upgraded single target heal. Typically we won't use this too much when it comes to endgame content but as you're leveling do take note that you will be using this fairly often. It costs a lot of MP so do be wary of that. You might be using Cure 1 more than Cure 2 when it comes to leveling content and once you get higher you might ignore Cure 1 and use more Cure 2s but this will be up to your play style and how low you get the tank to drop and all that sort of good stuff. Which leads me on to regen. Now regen is our single target regen and what we do is we put this on the tank and once this is on the tank we typically keep this up on the tank when we're doing low end content so dungeons and stuff and this is going to save us having to use GCD heals like Cure 1 and Cure 2 on the tank and it's going to enable us to do more damage overall in the course of a dungeon pull or a raid fight for instance. We then have Medica 1 and Medica 2. So a bit like if you watched Astro, then this is like expected Helios and Helios. So Medica 1 is just a raw AoE heal. And we get this at level 10. And then Medica 2 is our regen AoE heal. And typically we want to use this more over Medica 1 because it's going to give everyone a regen and it's just more MP efficient overall and it's just going to heal everyone overall a lot more. Typically when it comes to a raid wide, what we do is we use a Medica 2. And then if the raid wide is really offering us too much damage then we'll use a medica one if we don't have access to any ogcd heals and typically we only do this in low end content as well because when we get a bit higher end content then we are less reliant on medica one and medica two it's the same for cure one and cure two once we get more ogcd heals we're a lot less reliant on medica one and medica two which leads me on to cure three cure three is also an AO heal but you put it on a particular target so you can target yourself and when you use this heal it's going to create a radius around you, a six yarn radius, so not very big. And it's going to heal everyone around that radius for 600 potency. This saw a lot of use back in the day, but currently it doesn't see too much use right now, especially in low end content. Sometimes in raid instances, when damage is really going out and really hurting everyone, then we tend to stack up together and then cure free spam and get us through all the damage and stuff. You don't see it too often, but do keep in mind that you do have this ability. And that's typically where it gets used most in. We then have Benediction. This is on a three minute cooldown, 180 seconds. You get a level 50 and it literally just restores all HP to that target. I typically tend to use this in a dungeon pool. I just let the tank drop really low. And if I'm all out of other OGCD heals, then I use a Benediction. And that's just going to get their health all the way back up to max. And then I can continue to do damage. It's also really good paired with Living Dead from Dark Knight and also Super Belied from Gunbreaker. So keep that in mind. We then have Asylum. Asylum is going to place a puddle in our designated location and it's basically an aoe regen whoever enters that puddle is going to get that aoe regen super handy it's on a 90 second cooldown and you're going to unlock this at level 52. i typically tend to use this in dungeon pools as well on the tank just as a replacement for regen or when regen runs out or whatever then asylum comes in super handy to enable me to continue doing damage but still having a healing source on the tank once you get to level 78, you'll have an additional effect to this and it's going to increase HP recovery via healing actions on anyone who's in the puddle by 10%. So you can put a regen on the tank again if they're in the puddle or do a Medica 2 on everyone who's uh, in the puddle in a raid instance and it's going to make that regen overall better. Any heal actually is going to just be better if they're in the puddle, if they're in the asylum. So yeah, that's pretty good for that. Make sure we're fully utilizing that. Then we have a size. We get this to level 56. And this is honestly mostly tied to our damage, but we'll go over it now real quick. So what it does is it does 400 damage to all enemies and 400 kill potency to all allies. It also restores our MP by 5%. So super handy to be using this off cooldown because as a white mage, we kind of run out of MP very fast. So using this on cooldown is pretty much essential. And it's also just really good damage. So make sure we're fully utilizing this 
for damage sake. We then have Tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton is just a single target OGCD heal. We get it at level 60 and it's on a 60 second recast. This is almost as good as a cure too, by the way. So what we do with this typically is just use it when the tank drops low or someone takes a hit that they shouldn't take. Then we can use Tetra on them and it's just going to give them a nice nifty heal and we might not have to worry about them then. And it might save us a GCD heal. So overall, really good. Make sure we're fully utilizing this. We then have Divine Benison. This is on a 30 second cooldown, so really short. And we get a level 66. It's going to create a barrier around a target for the equivalent of 500 cure potency. It won't heal them for that. It will just make a barrier of that strength. This is really good on dungeon pool. So put it on the tank in a dungeon pool or put it on the tank in a tank buster or filler damage. Very useful, very versatile. We then have plenary indulgence. Now this is super nifty, super handy. We get it at level 70 and it's on a 60 second recast. It's going to grant a buff called confession to everyone and that's going to last 10 seconds. And basically every time we use Medica 1, Medica 2, Cure Free or Flatus Rapture, which I'll go over in a moment, it's going to proc an additional heal of 200 potency on everybody affected so pretty much use this to buff your aoe healing we then have temperance now temperance is going to give us wings and it's on a 120 second cooldown we get it at level 80 it's going to increase our healing magic potency by 20 percent and it's also going to reduce the damage taken by yourself and nearby party members by 10 percent so typically i tend to use this on raid wides but just before the raid wide damage goes out in preparation so i'm mitigating the damage and then getting a healing buff as well and i also use this in dungeon pools on the tank as a cooldown for them because i feel like it's just handy for them to have an extra cooldown if they you know are lacking that cooldown and whatnot it's just super versatile super handy so make sure we're fully utilizing this we then have aqua veil this is on a 60 second cooldown it's last eight seconds and it is unlocked at level 86 it's going to reduce the targets damage taken by 15 percent so this is like a tank cooldown but you can put it on anyone so i typically tend to put this on the tank when they do a pull in a dungeon and i also use this on a tank buster or even filler damage in raids and such so again very versatile and it's on an incredibly short cooldown so make sure we're really getting full usage out of this we then have Liturgy of the Bell. Now, Liturgy of the Bell has a very long tooltip, so let me explain. It's on 180 second cooldown, and we get this at level 90. It's going to put a little flower on the floor, and basically this flower is going to last 15 seconds, and it's going to grant ourselves five stacks of Liturgy of the Bell. Basically, every time we take damage with this buff up, it's going to expend one of those stacks, and it's going to give everyone a cure of 400 potency so incredibly strong by the way for aoe's and it can do this up to five times if for any reason that you don't take five hits in succession then once the duration has ran out it's going to convert all the remaining stacks into 200 cure potency each so if you have four stacks left then it's going to be 800 cure potency across everyone in your party so it doesn't get wasted if it runs out either of course it doesn't get as much value if you don't take all the damage but it doesn't get wasted at least and it's still super good a really good instance for using this is obviously raid wides right when it's aoe damage coming out but also when a boss in particular any boss really but when a boss uses a AoE and it causes a bleed effect or something like that, a debuff that's going to really hurt, then this is going to proc on you every time that bleed ticks and, of course, the impact of the AoE. And it's just going to heal everyone continuously five times over. So really handy for those kind of situations. So that's my advice from me to you. Really handy for particular fights that might have bleed effects and stuff like that. Let's move on to our last healing spells, which are Aflatus Solace and Aflatus Rapture. Now, these two are on the GCD, and basically all they are is a Flatus Solace is a single target heal, and a Flatus Rapture is a AoE heal. A Flatus Solace, as you can see, is doing the same potency as a Cure 2, but it doesn't cost any MP, so super handy and super good to use this on single target when we need to. And a Flatus Rapture is also the same potency as a Medica 1. So again, using this over Medica 1 and over Cures is essential more or less and it's really important to do this and of course to make sense of how we are going to use these is by explaining the lily gauge so once we get to level 52 is once we get access to a flate of solace at the least it's we're going to have the lily gauge and for every 30 seconds in combat we're going to add a lily to our gauge and we can hold up to three lilies on our gauge every time we use an flate of solace or an flate of rapture this is going to convert one of those lilies into a blood lily and these blood lilies is once we have three of these blood lilies, then we're going to have access to Aflatus Misery, which leads me on to Aflatus Misery, which is a AoE on a particular target. So it's going to cleave that, that target and I will target around it. 
the first hit is going to do 900 potency and then all the other enemies will take 25% less of the initial potency. So this is really good for AoE damage and it's also really good for single target when a raid buff is up. Then we see a raid buff and we have misery stacks and go for it, use that misery. It's going to really increase our damage output overall. There's, there's two optimization ways to deal with this, by the way, which I'm going to go into now. So in a raid instance, when a boss becomes untargetable, then what we can do is we can actually just use raptures, use solaces and farm blood lilies if we don't need to use solace or rapture later on into the fight. This is going to make it so we have free blood lilies when the boss comes back down and then we can use misery when we have raid buffs. So increasing our damage output overall. And then say in a dungeon instance, if we are confident in our own healing abilities or the tank's capability, then what we can do is between pools we can use solace on the tank or just rapture whatever right and we can farm our blood lilies again and then once the tank has pulled a big pack we can then use misery on the pack and we're just going to do a massive aoe and it's just going to be big deeps overall so that's just some optimization to keep in mind some advice from me to you if you do want to push your damage even further and you don't need solace or rapture later on into the dungeon or the raid instance Let's go over the other DPS spells. So we have quite a few variations here. We have Stone and Glare. Stone and Glare is our single target and they are the same thing. Okay, so Stone turns into Glare later on into your leveling experience. So when I'm talking about Glare or Stone, it means Glare or Stone. This is just our single target DPS spell. So make sure we're using this on single target. We then have Arrow and Deer. Again, same with Glare and Stone. This is the exact same. We're going to start our leveling experience with arrow and later on into the experience it's going to be upgraded to deer and basically it just does more damage this is just our dot our single target dot so make sure we're keeping this up on enemies which in a single target instance at all times we then have holy and holy free same thing holy turns into holy free gets an upgrade and just a little tip the moment we get holy free we will be using holy on three plus targets before we get holy free low when it is only holy one we'll use holy on two plus targets so when it is two enemies we'll use holy one once our holy is upgraded to holy free because then our glare is upgraded to glare free we'll only be using holy on three plus targets then so keep that in mind when you want to really optimize your damage okay let's finish off with the utility side of white mage so we have presence of mind which is basically our dps utility we can use this to reduce our spell cast times and recast times by 20 percent so using this when we need to do damage of course more or less on cooldown really it aligns with everyone's raid buffs so we're gonna get so many spells out when we're using presence of mind and it's just a really nifty dps ogcd to use when we are playing optimally and we want to do as much damage as possible then we use presence of mind get all those spells out and yeah just increase our damage overall we then have thin air now thin air is quite a weird one actually since the change we get it at level 58 it's on a 60 second recast and it has two charges once we use this it's going to allow the next spell that we use to cost no mp now typically what i do is if i am dpsing and only dpsing then i use for now one of my dps spells of course which isn't huge at all because dps spells cost so low mp but if i need to heal then using for now on a cure 2 a medica 2 or a resurrect which we'll go into a moment will completely nullify that MP required and that's just going to save us a lot of pain. So maybe if we want, use one Finna, save the MP and then maybe keep one in reserve for a Resurrect when we're say in a progression instance and we want to use a Resurrect and it not cost any MP, then we use Finna, Resurrect, boom. We have not used any MP for that Resurrect, so super handy for that. We then have Raise, which is our Resurrect. We know what this does. This is just going to Resurrect a dead person and yeah, we want to typically do this when someone dies we then have our roll actions which are our last actions by the way we have repose which inflicts target of sleep doesn't see much use so don't worry about this too much we have a sooner which cleanses one detrimental effect from the target so i will show some footage of basically what you should be looking out for when you can use a sooner and basically it's like a little white line above the debuff and that means you can cleanse it if that white line is not any debuff it means you cannot cleanse it so just keep that in mind we then have swift cast now swift cast is going to allow the next spell to be cast without any cast time so this is really handy for dpsing actually there is an instance where we use this for dpsing the movement for instance is a big one 
But it's also really good when paired with Raze, our Resurrection, because it's going to allow that Resurrect to be cast without a spell time, and that means they're just going to be resurrected straight away with no delay. It's on a 60 second cooldown, so pretty short overall, so pretty good. We now have Lucid Dreaming. This is just our MP regenerative buff, and it's on a 60 second cooldown. We want to use this around 7 to 8k, give or take, and that's going to keep our MP at a nice healthy level. We then have Shore Cast. This allows our spells to be cast without interruption, but it also nullifies most knockback and drawing effects. So say, for instance, when a boss is going to do a big knockback and you don't want to be knocked back because you want to continue to do damage, then use Shore Cast and you will continue to do damage, not get knocked back, and life is good. We then have Rescue, very niche Probably won't have footage for this because getting footage for this is a pain because it's so niche. It's on 120 second cooldown and basically what it does is when we use this on a person, it's going to drag that person to our location and it can rescue them from eminent danger. Say if they're standing in an AOE and you want to rescue them out of it because that's going to save you having to heal them and babysit them, then use rescue and save yourself a lot of pain. That's going to do all the kit the White Mage has to offer. Let's now move on to the opener and rotation. Okay, so for opener and rotation, it's actually like super basic, but I'll show you some footage here. So the first one is using swift cast in the opener. So typically what we do is this is our default and we're going to do this when we know that it's a fight that we know. So it's a fight we know and we've progressed already or it's a fight that we're not progressing actively. Then this is how we're going to open it in a fight and then it's just glare spam and keep your dear dot all pretty simple stuff. I'll then show you what we would do if we were not to use swift cast in the opener. So here's another piece of footage of what we would do without using swift cast. Again, there's not really too much to go into here. All we're doing is we're swapping up some OGCD usage here, putting them in different places really. And we're just not using swift cast. So pretty simple stuff really. And that is how we're doing it. And it's the same deal, glare spam and then deer when, you know, your deer needs to get back up. So just keep that deer up and glare spam away. Okay, now this probably won't take two seconds, but let's quickly show you a dungeon example. So we're in Smilathon here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to regen the tank. The tank is going to do the first pull. And all I'm going to really do here is just put some deers up on the enemy because I don't want to use holy as much as I really do because it's going to stun the mobs and that would suck for the tank. I'm just going to reapply my regen, swift cast my holy, press presence of mind and holy away at a fast paced. Going to put my asylum down. I'm going to throw some shields on the tanks, some divine venisons, and then I'm going to aqua veil him when I saw he didn't have any cooldowns there. And it's really just that simple. Like it, there's not too much to go into in this department. I just want to give you a quick example of what we're doing. But as I let this footage play out, what I do want to actually say is when we are leveling, just be wary that we don't have all of this kit. So we might need to throw in some GCD heals or at the very least solaces when it comes to it. So just keep that in mind. It's honestly not too difficult as a white mage. It's such a straightforward healer. Don't worry about it too much. Just keep the regen on the tank. Use Asylum when it's up. Remember, you have Benediction and Tetra at your disposal. So when the tank drops really low, use Benediction. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Now let's just go over the stats and gearing as a white mage. So almost like every healer and almost every job in the game, crit is our number one stat. After that, it's between direct hit and determination. Now, if you prefer to have a little healing on top of your damage, then you go determination. But honestly, the healing is so minimal that direct hit is still kind of the way to go. Determination, now don't get confused by this, but Determination is actually a stronger stat overall, but because healers have no baseline to direct hit whatsoever, direct hit does actually become a stronger stat for healers DPS because we don't have any in our gear. Due to this reason, we will be melding direct hit when we can't meld any more crit. Again, this is up to you though, if you want to get the extra bit of healing in, which is so marginal, it's probably not going to save you a heal, but I don't think anyone's going to judge you for doing it either way, is meld debt over direct hit if you want to do that so that's kind of up to you i personally go direct hit but you can do what you want after that it's spell speed spell speed being probably our most undervalued stat as a white mage uh, we don't really need too much of it honestly that said there is some best in slots that do use some spell speed but honestly it's again it's really just not needed then of course piety now piety is very a personal preference stat in my opinion you, you either need it or you don't need it so I'm usually not a person who really needs it, but if you do want some piety, then go for it. I do think that you might need some piety now, actually, as a white mage, due to the MP cost of things and the presence of mind just basically destroying our MP and just not having too much access to MP abilities. Because of this, we might want some piety, but it's nothing that we're going to not naturally get when we're using our gear anyway, so I wouldn't 
think about it too much, honestly. So yeah, other than that, melding, crit, direct hit, then debt and spell speed, whatever, right? And that will actually conclude the guide. Hopefully it hasn't taken too long because white mage is such a basic job that hopefully I haven't took too long. There were some little nitty gritty things that I did want to go over, of course. So hopefully I've ironed those out for you guys and made those made sense. But other than that, yeah, white mage is super straightforward job. It's not too bad of a job. It could use some changes probably here and there. I'm not all healer main, so I won't put too much input on that subject. But I can say that as a white major, I do feel like it needs a little bit more, maybe a little more, more damage, maybe uh, something to thin air. Thin air's kind of a bit like it's not great right now. It used to be so much better, and I don't know why they did that to thin air. Personal opinion, of course. I just don't think it's that good anymore. Not as good as it used to be, anyway. And honestly, if you do play White Mage, don't feel bad about it because you're dealing so much damage as a White Mage yourself. White Mages deal incredible damage and they have incredible healing output. So playing a White Mage isn't anything that you should be afraid to do because don't think, oh, I'm not playing an Astro. I'm not offering the cards like an Astro does. Don't worry, your DPS is so high in comparison to other healers that if you do output your dps if you glare accordingly then you're gonna be dealing a lot of damage anyway you won't make up exactly for that dps loss of putting cards down but you're gonna still actively contribute to your team so don't worry about that honestly it's only gonna matter when it comes to like doing doing speed kills and stuff like that and not even an ultimate content honestly so don't worry about it too much if you're white mage main your class your job is still okay so don't worry about that at all you're still in a good place anyway that'll do it for my closing thoughts not too much about it I, I like white mage it's a fun job it's very straightforward it's very comfortable it's very easy to play it's just a welcoming healer in general there's a few things you can do to optimize it and make it a bit better but other than that it's honestly very straightforward so yeah that'll do it thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate your time like the video if you did enjoy it i would appreciate that leave a comment if you think i missed anything or just let me know how you're finding white mage in this expansion and if you want subscribe if you enjoy my content why not give me a subscribe i cover content guides job guides and all sorts i've actually recently put my feet into blue mage so hopefully when blue mage goes to level 80 i can offer some guides on the 80 content for blue mage as well so look forward to that i'll also be covering the ultimate that comes out in a few months once i clear it, i will be making a full and comprehensive guide for that and i think that's gonna kick off pretty well so i do look forward to that actually quite a bit and i do just look forward to getting my feet into the new ultimate very exciting stuff anyway i'll see you guys in the next one so take it easy stay safe we out peace